there, hi there, hello there. Welcome back to The Hive. So today we're talking about the sustainability of solar energy. Now, this isn't a question of the sustainability of the power source, AKA the sun. Obviously there's no concerns there. But the sun's radiative energy doesn't just spontaneously provide power to switch on the lights. It requires some pretty specific technical hardware. And one thing we all understand is that anything we humans produce has a usage expiration date. Solar panels aren't new, but they've only been in use for large-scale commercial supply of electricity for just over two decades, with the lifespan of most solar or PV cells being in the region of 25 to 35 years, we're only now approaching retirement age of the original large-scale installations. Up to this time, we've only really had to deal with systems going out of service due to damage, small general faults and failure, or the owner wishing to install an upgraded version to achieve higher system efficiency. With an increasing number of installed systems, of course we'll also see an increase in decommissioned systems. So what happens to them at the end of their life? To answer that, we must consider the materials they're produced from. These commonly include aluminum, polymers or plastic, glass, silicon, copper, lead, cadmium, gallium, indium, and silver paste. Some of these materials are toxic, leading to concern about these PV units being dropped into landfills. However, a recent study by the International Energy Agency's Photovoltaic Power Systems Program found that possible chemical leaching from selenium, cadmium, and lead was below U.S. regulatory thresholds for both the cancer and non-cancer hazard quotient, and also below the World Health Organization thresholds. Having said that, the researchers themselves admit that their results do not represent a complete nor cumulative health risk, so recycling PV modules is a far better option. And landfill should be the last resort for everything anyway. Recyclability of PV components has been worked on for many years. The US is at the back of the pack, while Europe has been tackling PV waste since 2007 through nonprofit entity PV Cycle, who now work with Veolia. They collect thousands of tons of PV e waste from across Europe every year and have recently commenced operation in the United States to save it from landfills. And while this may be the healthier option and better for the planet, it is costly and complicated. For each silicon PV module recycled, it's estimated that approximately only $3 can be redeemed, which is far less than the cost of collection and processing. Perhaps this is the reason it's only Washington State which has regulation around solar module recycling in the US. Recycle PV Solar, one of the only American-based operations, estimates that a mere 10% of solar panels are recycled, with the rest going to landfill or being exported to developing countries with weaker environmental laws. Part of the problem is also that not all components can be dealt with due to the complexity of separating it all. Companies in Australia, though, are making great progress on this front, spurred on by the fact that legislation prevents PV cells, or any e-waste for that matter, from being disposed of in landfills. Recently opened solar recycling plants operated by energy cooperative Lotus Energy recover and recycle all parts, cables, inverters, solar modules, and batteries with no use of chemicals required in other facilities globally to extract the metal and other compounds. They are the first to recycle 100% of the modules and panels with the output being high-grade silica dust, high-grade aluminum, reusable silica cells, copper, PVC, and silver. This is a huge step forward for the industry and an important one for Australia as they continue to push hard on installing more and bigger arrays. In fact, by 2050, it is estimated that Australia will have to deal with 1.5 million tons of waste panels and just short of 100,000 tons of storage batteries. Lucky then that while this plant is the newest and possibly most efficient, it is not the only company in operation in Australia 
playing their part. In some sort of unfortunate paradox, by adopting more sustainable practices, we will produce more waste. But luckily, we've got a good lead time for working out the best solutions. So rest assured, Swarmers, that whenever you hear climate deniers out there espousing the non-sustainable nature of solar power, there are innovative and intelligent people working hard to ensure the incoming glut of solar waste, which will in the meantime be useful solar power for our planet, is dealt with appropriately and responsibly. Thanks again for joining us, Swarmers. It is so great to have you here. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe so you don't miss out on our next videos, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay sustainable. See you next time.